Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is going to be a continuation of the plant review series, and this is going to be an update video on the Philodendron White Princess. This is obviously as close as I can get you, so everything is in shot, but I will be adding in clips throughout the video. Now this is one that a lot of people wanted to see last time and I thought I'd do a bit of an update. I've also got another plant that is very similar that has just come into my care. So I will kind of show you that as well at some point. Some of you might already be guessing. I haven't got all three, I have got two now. So third one left to go. But yeah, essentially it's just going to be an update to see how this plant has done. A few things have changed over the past year. But before we get into any of that, let's lay down some ground rules. So if you're returning back and you're one of the regulars, welcome back, it's nice to have you back. You know the deal at this point, so if you wanted to skip to your favorite section, you can down in the progress bar below. And if you are joining for the first time, these kind of ground rules are mainly for you. So as I always say in these videos, there is no way that this review can be unbiased. It is my biased opinion about growing my specific plant in my specific conditions, which is based in a conservatory in the UK, and whatever that might mean in terms of light, which is currently blinding me, heat, cold, all of these things, humidity, low humidity, high humidity, all of these things, depending on the season, I get the full spectrum in here. So what I would say is these reviews are based on my experience. Now, if you want to share your experiences down below in the comments, please do, because I know a lot of people don't necessarily grow in the same way that I would grow in a conservatory. Not everybody's fortunate to have a conservatory, which is a glorified massive plant room slash terrarium, really, at this, <laughs> point, <laughs> at this point in here. But share your experiences with the plant, how you found it, what your growing conditions might be, and I'm sure that will help other people out when they're looking to potentially get this plant or they've just got this plant so they want to know a bit more about what they need to do in terms of care. Now with that out of the way, let's dive into the first topic. So going into background, I got this plant from a plant store can't remember how many years ago, probably I'd say two or three, but the title will have it at this point. Obviously, it's a year later than my previous review or thereabouts. So some of the things might have changed. But this was a plant that back then and now specifically, and I'll touch on this on availability in a bit, isn't one of the hardest ones to find of this variety. And by this variety, I mean plants that are green, with white variations. So obviously this being the white princess, it tends to be the one that at least here in the UK, there was a lot more of it that came into the market. There are a couple of others that look very, very similar. One of which I bought recently. So this, and I'm sure there's probably gonna be quite a few of you at least here in Europe and the UK, because I've seen this come up a lot recently. This is a baby philodendron white wizard. I do not have the white knight. So it's the white wizard, the White Knight and the White Princess. Now, I'm quite glad that I got the White Wizard from day one when I saw these plants a good few years back now, because it was the White Wizard and the White Knight that really came into most people's periphery or kind of like awareness a while back now, a good few years back now. And then the White Princess came shortly thereafter, basically. And it was always the more affordable, easily accessible option. Again, I will say based here in the UK and in Europe. But the difference is obviously when you're looking at all of these different plants, and I dove into this a bit more before filming this video, just so I've got a better understanding of how they are. Because in, on the face of it, they are all kind of green philodendrons. They all grow paddly type leaves. They all have brilliant white variegation. Now, the white knight has got white on the petioles. And as you might be able to see from this, it doesn't really have any white on the petioles. There's a tiny bit of creaminess, but it is proper candy striping on that. This one doesn't. So this one's got green petioles, but they both have the same kind of white and green variegation. So does the pink princess. Now, the thing that I didn't know is 
the and I might be incorrect with this, correct me down below if you think it's different, is that these, so the Philodendron White Wizard and the White Knight are kind of more climbing type philodendron. So if you give them a moss pole, they will kind of get larger as it goes along. The other thing that I found out, and I'm quite happy about this, is the white wizard apparently tends to grow a lot faster than the white knight. And the white wizard also tends to get much, much larger leaves, which is good because, I mean, the white princess, and I will also be inserting clips, has got, can size up quite nicely. Some of the lower leaves are quite sizable at this point. Um, you can't see them, but again, I'll hopefully be adding clips. But this one does grow a bit faster. The interesting thing is, and I would tend to agree with this, is that the white princess is a self-heading plant. And for those that might not know, self-heading is it means it will grow upright in a column and the leaves will go on either side, but it doesn't necessarily need supports. As far as I could tell, I think the other two are not. If I am wrong, I will correct it up the top. And if I'm wrong, it'll probably be the other way around. But I'm pretty sure the self-heading one is the White Princess. Now, the other thing that I will say, and I will add a photo here of when I first got this plant. This, for me, has been a relatively fast grower generally. But again, I'll touch on that and speed of growth. But overall, I don't think this is a plant that people would necessarily struggle to come by. And... Yeah, it's, it's been a plant that had a kind of very uneventful way of entering my collection. Because as I said, I found it at a regular plant store. I don't think I was looking for that plant at that specific time. It wasn't like a wish list plant. But I'm just like, hey, no, I've got the pink princess. Why not get the white princess? And I have to say, since getting the white princess, I 100% prefer it over my pink princess. Because like a lot of people, and I have done another review, and I'll link it at the top there, the Pink Princess for me is a bit of a ruddy, muddy looking plant for the majority of the time. I got one of those kind of plants that came out onto the market and the, when everybody was really kind of starting to get into it. So they were, the, the genetics were massively diluted down. So we don't have an awful lot of irrigation on our plants. I will say that recently I have seen plants because less people might be interested in them or there's more out there that have got better genetics, so they're coming with a lot more pink variegation coming through. But regardless, I still prefer this. This doesn't give me anywhere near as much trouble. It doesn't get the stuck leaves like the Pink Princess does. Just overall a much better plant. But let's look at the next topic. So coming into speed of growth, and I am rearranging this because I have got a couple of comments from people saying you don't need to have the availability after the background, do what you want to do. I prefer the availability where it was. I'm going to leave it where it was. So, <laughs> so speed of growth. Speed of growth for this one is fast, I will say. And I don't think this has changed much from my first review. It's still relatively fast. The one thing I will say, and again, hopefully I'll be adding in clips, this is one of the plants that I found that when I chop it to propagate it, because obviously it kept getting way too tall and way too leggy. And again, this is another plant where the stem at the bottom is very thin and the stem at the top is very, very thick, almost kind of monstera stem thickness, basically. So, yeah, it's getting a bit top heavy. <laughs> it is being held up with prayers, plant ties and supporting itself against the plant shelf that I've got at the moment. So. <laughs> But it does grow very, very fast. The one thing that I was saying, obviously, just now, is that as soon as I chopped and propped it, any time I chopped and propped it, it doesn't, it does get beat back by a good few months. So it does take a while to then start regrowing. What I have done now, and I'll touch on this on propagation, is I am trying to air layer it. But if you're not chopping it and you're just letting it grow, especially even if you have chopped it and it's starting to grow again, it's just that kind of re-entry into growth after being chopped. This is a relatively fast philodendron. So again, benchmarking it against the golden pothos. If a golden pothos in the summertime will bring out two or three leaves a month, this might do the same actually. It is. It can be that fast. This one's also one that will continue to grow even in the winter as well. So usually... A month, I'll probably get a new leaf, at least once a month or once every month and a half. 
in the deepest, darkest, coldest winter, this is still going. I will say, however, something that I have noticed is that the leaves that come out in the winter tend to have less variegation. And we've touched on this on previous videos in terms of like, you can't give a plant more light to get more levels of variegation necessarily. You can get brighter variegation, but it's interesting because this one is, yeah, I don't know whether or not it's just been a fluke over the time that I've had it, but in the winter, there tends to be lower levels of variegation. It might be just because there's less light, the plant is struggling, it's not going to put out a leaf that has an awful lot of variegation if it can control it, whilst in the summer there's more sun, there's more light, there's all these things, it might then be less hesitant to bring out more highly variegated leaves. I don't know, I might be talking out of my bum there, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say on a speed of growth. Let's move into the next topic. So ease of propagation with this, and I do actually have a couple of propagates that I can show you. And don't judge me too much, both of these propagates are not looking great. So let me put the first one down and I will show you the second one or first one, depending on how you look at it, basically. So that's the level of irrigation on this propagate. So it's got one activated area there and it's got a couple of smaller activated areas there. Every single one of the leaf has got some form of variegation on it. I was really hopeful with this one because this one exhibits the thing that you might get sometimes on the philodendron pink princess and the white princess as you might be able to pick up there is a tiny bit of pink coming through. So, and I can never remember, I think is it the white princess tricolor where you get the green, the white, and occasionally you get pink variation coming through as well. I've never had it on this specific plant, but I will say that if it does occur, I'm not going to be angry about it. But the one thing I will say about this, this is currently in pond with a water reservoir, and this, this has been growing not great. It wasn't getting the best amount of light. So light is really important when you're coming to propagating this, I have found out. Don't give it very, very medium to low light. It definitely needs that bright, bright indirect light in order for it to do better. And it's only when I've moved this to a better lighting position that it's done better. It has done okay in pond, and I will show you one that's in soil as well, or kind of an aroid mix. And if you thought that one looked pathetic, wait until you see this one. So this is the original leaf, and I cut off the white variegated section just to make it more kind of better at photosynthesizing, because it doesn't need that much white, because this was unfortunately a half moon. And you can see how large this leaf would have been, and considering that this is curling, this is dying off, this was the leaf that it was propagated with. But, and I might be able to show you the stem there. And I am aware that I've just seen some media bugs on this, so I need to deal with that. But you can see the thickness of that stem there in relation to some of these. The level of variegation on the petiole is insane. But look at how pathetic these are looking. And I found that this is definitely a plant either in soil or pond or kind of semi hydro way. It definitely, when you're propagating it, it definitely, and the, and the mother plant as well, it needs a dry period. So by dry period, I mean, I, I need to let it go dry before I water it. Whilst I find with my pink princess, it doesn't necessarily tolerate even a day of being fully dry. So this is an interesting one with this one, at least it might just be my plant, but that's what I've experienced. The other thing that I will say is that with this plant, and I say this most of the time for the propagations, is if I've got any idiosyncrasies in terms of my plant's genetics and how I'm finding it in terms of propagation, every propagate I've got from the mother plant who might have a genetic predisposition to something weird, for instance, I will also have in all the propagates because it's the same DNA that's pulling through. It's vegetative propagation. So whatever DNA is in the mother will pass on to the propagates. So I will have the same issues over again. It doesn't always necessarily mean that all propagates of this specific type of plant will have the same issue. Does that make sense? So for instance, if your white princess is struggling with having a tendency towards going towards root rot easily, this one ironically enough doesn't, at least not in my experience, but say yours does and you propagate from it. And 
you take cuttings and you root them out and all these things. And you notice they've also got the same thing. It's very easy for you to turn around and say, oh, this plant definitely, like, so the white princess will always have issues with root rot. Possibly, but it possibly could also be the genetics of your specific white princess and not everybody else's. That's why I find these interesting, these videos really kind of helpful and interesting because we can see, especially down in the comments, we can see trends. So for instance, if you're seeing certain things that I've said and nobody else is agreeing, to me, the way that I read that is my plant just has some genetic idiosyncrasies and it's passed it on to all of its propagates. If you're seeing a lot of people agreeing with me down below, at that point, you can kind of start saying, well, maybe it is an issue with the plant. It's not just the one that Memo has, for instance. So worth noting that, and it's always worth remembering that when you're looking at other people's videos or other people's kind of commentary online, most of us can only judge on the plant that we've got. The really interesting thing happens, and I know some people have this, when they've got, when they bought multiples of the same plant, even better if, and I know <laughs> based on comments that you've all made, I know that some of you will do this, such as I've already got this plant, but I found it and it looks great and I want a second one, I'm gonna buy the second one. That's great because the likelihood of those plants coming from the same grower or from the same batch is lower. If the reason why I'm saying this is if you go into a shop and you find two philodendron white princess and pick them up at the same time, they might have both originated from the same mother plant because they've probably come from the same grower and they probably came with the same growing batch. So does that make sense? I've prattled on way too long, but it's interesting to know these things when you're looking at kind of benchmarking kind of variegation, or variegation? Propagation, that's the word I need. Propagation within plants and the genetics and how things might transfer over. The one final thing that I will add on to the ease of propagation bit is that I have propagated in both pond and in kind of an aroid mix. The thing that I have found is it took a long time for things to start rooting out and to even start pushing out new leaves. I will caveat this and say I have only ever tried to propagate this plant usually in the winter. So I don't know whether or not it's the winter. Both of those plants that I showed you, they're both down below now. Both of those plants that I showed you also were grown in the same lighting conditions. So take that and do with that as you will. It might have been my conditions that I had these plants in that were causing these problems. So coming into availability, and I did talk about this in the very beginning when I was looking at background. Obviously I mentioned that I got this from a plant store. When I got this back in the day, it really wasn't that expensive. I think it was mid to low, mid to low mid double digits for a relatively established plant. Hopefully I had a picture that I added in earlier on so you could see what it looked like when I first got it. But it wasn't, it wasn't a small plant by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't a baby plant like the white wizard that I showed you. It was a much more established plant. And yeah, the price was quite good. Now, I don't think the prices have fluctuated too, too much. If anything, they've maybe come down a tiny bit. I think I saw one recently when I saw the White Wizard in a shop. Interestingly enough, mine I got from a, a kind of order that I did with Grow Tropicals. And yes, I do have an unboxing video that is coming soon on that. But yeah, they're, they're still on the market. They come up on occasion. I think it was around this time of the year when they came out again. So I would imagine there's usually batches of these plants that come out maybe heavily around one time of the year, maybe kind of around February to May time. And maybe that's a kind of yearly cycle that happens because I don't see flushes of them coming out all the time. Like you might get new golden pothos that come all the time. So there is something to bear in mind. Again, and I will always say this here in the UK, which I would also imagine would be the same in Europe. So it'd be interesting to see if your locations are any different and if you get kind of influxes of plants, either this one or others, kind of yearly rather than them, being, them just being available all the time. In terms of prices, said, it really isn't that much. I think the White Wizard and the White Knight are were, were for a long period of time much harder to find. They also started getting produced by the growers in the Netherlands, so at least here in the UK and England, you could get slightly more established plants for triple digits, low triple digits. I also still saw those lower triple digits plants coming in for the white knights and the white wizards for more mature plants. But now we're getting much cheaper kind of baby plants 
that people can kind of grow out. And I'm all about the baby plants at the moment because I don't currently have any space. And if you are smart and you are rightly saying, well, you've got a baby plant, but based on your collection, they're probably going to get big at some point. Yes, but that's a future memo problem, not a right now memo problem. So <laughs> I will deal with that <laughs> when it happens. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say on availability. Let's move on. So pests on this one, and I did show you before on the propagate, and I will show you again, but it's not one of the predominant pests that I will tend to get on this one, and I'll see if I can get it to focus. You might be able to see a couple, maybe a few mealybugs on there. I do need to deal with that. That is the older part of the plant. Is there any on here? Potentially, yes, I do need to have this a bit of a spray down. Yay, more mealy bags for Memo. But um, it doesn't ever get out of control. I think the last time I checked it was probably like a couple of days ago and they weren't there, so it's not too bad. I'll deal with them generally. But so yeah, mealy bugs on occasion. Interestingly enough, I've never really had it on the mother plant and the mother plant is around a lot of plants that will occasionally get mealy bugs. So that is quite impressive. Please ignore my crispy and crusty second gloriosum. That one is my problem child, but I just kind of let it do its own thing. Plants in nature are not perfect. They won't be in my conservatory either. It's fine. I have too many plants to also be tailoring them to all look Instagrammable all the time. They're fine. Let them be what they need to be. But yeah, in terms of pests with this one, as I said, mealy bugs. Have I ever had spider mites? Maybe on occasion spider mites. But I think that's it. I don't think I've ever had thrips on it, touch wood. I don't think I've had, ooh, no, white fly. I think I have had white fly on this. Let me just check. Oh, yes, I most definitely had white fly on this underneath because the, the leaves are quite bright underneath. So the white fly was kind of attracted to that as well. But other than that, it's not, for me, it's generally not a massively pest-prone philodendron. So I wouldn't say it's ones that no pest will ever generally go on, but it is one that generally doesn't have an awful lot of pest pressures. Now, accessories and care. This is an interesting one because you've seen, I showed you the propagates. The mother plant has was originally growing in an arrowed mix in a net pot. It has also grown in an arrowed mix in a terracotta pot. Both times did fine. I have since moved it at its established size in order to slow it down a bit into pond. And it did whilst it got accustomed to it. I think now it's accustomed to it and we've started to speed up again. Yay. But I am, and I did mention this, and I should have actually mentioned this in the propagation section, but I am actually, I don't know whether or not that's actually coming up. If I move uh, this leaf, you might be able to see it. Oh, there you go. Can you see the cup, the sphagnum moss, and it's also wrapped in cling film. That is currently how I'm trying to propagate this plant, and I'm hoping that way around that it won't kind of knock back the plant in terms of its growth, especially as we're slowly going to start coming into the warm months now. I don't want this slowing down too much because this is where it's really going to show up. But it's getting too top heavy as well, and I just need to do it. And I want to see if I can get something to grow a bit faster than the, <laughs> than the propagates that I've got, because the propagates that I've got are looking a bit pathetic at the moment. But yeah, I think in terms of anything else, would this have appreciated a moss pole, even though technically, as I said, I think it is kind of self-heading? Yes, if for no other reason for the support than nothing else. It does get some aerial roots and they can be quite a substantial one. Hopefully I'll be adding in some clips here, but nothing crazy, crazy, crazy. Does it need the humidity that the conservatory provides? Maybe, but I don't think this is a plant that would necessarily have too much of an issue in regular household humidity. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, when other people were making comments on this plant, some of them did actually say that they've got it, I think, in regular household humidity and it was fine. And I would imagine that would be the case because the leaves are quite leathery. You don't get that stuck caterpillar that you would get with the Pink Princess. So there is that. 
I think this would be okay, and I don't think it would necessarily go brown on the white sections as quickly as, say, something like the Monstera Albo would in a regular household humidity. But I'm sure you will correct me if I'm wrong there. But yeah, I think care wise, it's not a particularly fussy plant. So it gets fertilized like all my other plants, it gets watered when the pond is dry, because I haven't put it in a reservoir just yet. I will eventually put it in a reservoir, but there was a few plants so down behind me. I've got the mother plant for my Splendid, the White Princess, and on this other side here, I've got the Dark Lord. All of those struggled a lot because this gets the most amount of light, and you can probably see through the video that I'm getting kind of like blinded because the light is coming in and out all day today. This is the place where it gets really, like the water evaporates or gets used up super quickly in the summer and these were all in soil and I was watering them far too often in the summer. Uh, potentially with a dark lord as well I caused some root rot because that transitional period between summer and autumn over here but generally it's just summer to winter it caused it a bit too much stress so this summer and I want to have them in pond I want them to have established themselves in semi-hydro so by the time the summer comes around I'll be ready to get them into a reservoir and then at least it's a bit easier for me to just top up reservoirs that I think is going to be the wisest thing to do at that point. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about care. Let's move into the final topic. So final thoughts on this plant and hopefully I will find whatever score I gave it and put it at the top there from my original video. But before I get into that, I'll ask the same question a year later, knowing what I know now, if I didn't have this plant, would I get this plant? Yes, I would. I quite enjoy growing this plant. Would I have got it at the same time as a similar sized philodendron white knight and white wizard? Probably, because I would love to see how these all grow next to each other. There is something to be said, and this might just be me, and I don't have all three, and I don't know if anybody has got all three at roughly the same kind of life stage, really. They kind of, at least in pictures, they all look very samey. So with the exception of the white wizard having that white on the petioles and the white, sorry, the white knight having the whites on the petioles and the white wizard being green petioles and maybe the white wizard having a slightly larger leaf and this is slightly different... I don't know whether or not the differences are enough for it to be an interesting enough plant to have all three of them or whether or not they just look like you've got three of the same plant, if that makes sense. So, but yes, I would definitely have this. I mean, it's one of my easiest, yeah, I'd say that, one of my easiest variegated philodendron by far, I would say. It's, it's not a particularly challenging or variegated plant. Generally, it's not a particularly challenging or it hasn't been from my experience variegated plant to grow to be fair so yes so coming on to the score if zero is the worst and 10 is the best i would probably score this a seven like a solid seven purely because does it set my world on fire no do i enjoy growing it yes is it a relatively easy plant to grow also yes do I think a lot of people out there would probably enjoy it? And this is everything the Pink Princess promised but never delivered? Also, yes. <laughs> Without the pink, obviously. There is that chance that you might get some of the pink coming through, I think, with the tricolor. I'm trying to figure out what, the, what name we all gave it. I think there was, maybe it was tricolor. If not, I'll be correcting myself somewhere on the video. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about this specific plant as an update a year later. How are yours doing if you got it around the time of my previous videos or if you've had it for almost as long as I have? How are yours doing at the moment? Let us all know down below. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.